Song of Solomon, chapter number 7. I was reading this this afternoon, and something caught my eye. The Bible says in verse number 10, I am my beloved's, and his desire is toward me. Come, my beloved, let us go forth into the field. Let us lodge in the villages. Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us see if the vine flourish, whether the tender grape appear and the pomegranates bud forth. There will I give thee my loves. The mandrakes give a smell, and at our gates are all manner of pleasant fruits, new and old, which I have laid up for thee, O oh, my beloved. I never like to talk about the Song of Solomon without bringing out the truth of this book. There's a lot of people that want to spiritualize this book and say that it's a picture of Jesus and his bride, uh, and it is a picture of that. Uh, uh, but can I say it is a literal love story uh, between Solomon and a little maid. Uh, uh, can I say this little maid was not a princess. She was not the queen like she was. She was not uh, uh, someone who was uh, of prestige or someone that was well respected. Uh, matter of fact, in chapter number one, she said, I am black but, not, uh, but comely. Uh, 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 she going on and said, look not upon me because I'm black. Uh, because the son had looked upon me. Uh, my mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. Uh, 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 this woman was not like the fair ladies. The fair ladies, uh, Brother Donald, uh, uh, they didn't work out in the sun. They, uh, uh, back in Bible days, if your skin was tanned from the sun, uh, that meant that you was a, a servant or a slave. Uh, uh, you uh, were not a person of prestige because you were out in the sunshine unprotected. Uh, she said, uh, uh, they made me the keeper of the vineyards and I was so busy keeping everybody else's vineyards, mine own vineyard I have not kept. Amen, Brother. And some of you haven't got in on this meeting tonight because you've let your vineyard get unkept. You didn't take to heart that message, Brother Daniel, spinning them plates. You're still trying to spin them plates. Huh? And your vineyard hasn't been plowed the way God wants to plow it. Huh? But in uh, this wonderful book, we find that this uh, lady, Brother James, who was... Uh, a, a servant to her sisters, a lady who worked hard, a lady who was not comely. She caught the eye of Solomon. Yes, she did. And she went on to say he's fairer yeah. than 10,000. He's the chiefest. Uh, he's altogether lovely. Uh, uh, she said, hey, I can go to the lattice when he's been there uh, and I can smell drops of myrrh. Uh, uh, she said, uh, he brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. Uh, she said he's the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. Uh, 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 what a relationship she had with the king. Uh, you and I uh, were the off tower. We had no hope, no right. Uh, everybody looked down upon us. Uh, but one day Jesus passed by. Uh, what a blessing. He became altogether lovely to our soul. Uh, when you study the Song of Solomon, you've got to be careful because uh, it's a conversation between the bride and the bridegroom and uh, uh, the conversation and dialogue changes from person to person. You've got to be very cautious when you read it or you'll get confused on who's speaking. In these verses that we read, it is her who is speaking. In these verses, three times the word beloved is used. Hmm... Can I say in the Godhead, there's a trinity. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. But can I say in that word beloved, the 1828 No Webster Dictionary has three definitions for that word beloved. The first definition means loved. Can I say, she is saying, I love him and he loves me. Can I say, John said it this way. We love him because he first loved me. What a blessing. The second definition means greatly loved. It's one thing to tell somebody you love them. It's another thing to greatly love them. As believers, 
We are commanded to love one another. Right? And I don't buy into that theology. Some preachers say that say, I got to love you, but that don't mean I like you. How can I love you if I don't like you? Uh, uh, but I want to tell you, if the Spirit of God lives inside of me uh, and the Spirit of God lives inside of you, we have a kindred spirit. Uh, and regardless of our personality differences and regardless uh, of our ideologies and regardless of our upbringings and our down settings, uh, we can love the brethren. What a blessing. But it's different to deeply and dearly love somebody. Hmm? I love y'all, but I love Miss Annette in a whole different way than I love you. And can I say, uh, uh, I love you and you love me. I don't know why, but you do. But it's a different love we have to him. Uh, I dearly love him because he dearly loved me. Uh, Brother Brian, uh, uh, when you was that old bike rider, that old dope doer, uh, that drunk, uh, that wicked fella you was, uh, Jesus dearly loved you, uh, came to where you was, uh, let you to go down to homecoming down there in uh, uh, North Carolina and hear the word of God and got gloriously born again. Uh, hey, and now you dearly love him because he dearly loved you. Uh, he gave his life for you, and now you're living your life for him. It was dearly loved. Oh, Phil, your foul mouth, sorry, no good country boy, was a welder uh, uh, chewing tobacco, spitting uh, and spewing out venom out of your mouth. But one day you found out Jesus dearly loved you, uh, and you got born again, and now you dearly love him. Uh, you can't even sing a song without bragging on him, huh? She said, my beloved. She said, I love him. She said, let me back up. I dearly love him. But then that word also means this. Uh, it's dear to the heart. I not only dearly love him and greatly love him, but he's dear to my heart. Uh, and I got to looking at this. In verse number 12, she said this. The last clause, she says, there will I give thee my, what's that word say? She didn't say, I'll give you my love. love. Love's plural. What about that? Mm -mm. I like it. I Can I help you with something? We all have love for God, but we have love for other things too. She says to him, I will give thee my loves. And I thought about that for just a minute, giving Jesus my loves. He said, what does that mean? Well, I ought to give him the love of my heart. Because sure. uh -huh. uh, where your heart is, there's your treasure also. Are you listening? Uh, we ought to give him the treasure of our heart. In verse number 10, she says, uh, 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 I am my beloved. She's embraced him. She owns him. Uh, she's given him her heart. Uh, and I want to tell you something. He gave us his heart on Calvary. Uh, but she's saying, I'm giving him my heart uh, and his desires toward me. Uh, uh, the first love we ought to give him is the love of our heart. Uh, if you love him in your heart, it'll work its way out the rest of your life. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people, and Brother Bobby said the other night, they love him with their mind. Uh, but there's a difference when you love him in your heart. Uh, hey, when you love him, in your heart you'll not be easily disappointed uh, when you love him in your heart uh, uh, somebody's not going to have to tell you to worship uh, they're not going to have to tell you to give uh, unto me they're not going to have to tell you to be faithful uh, hey when you love him with your heart you'll walk with him and talk with him uh, and long to please him years ago brother Tony went with me on a trip down a camp meeting I am still not forgiving y'all. We left Sunday night after church, and I was going to have to drive quite a, quite a distance. And Miss Sonny, being concerned about her pastor, knew Brother Tony and Brother Mike Massey was going. And she told Brother Tony, she said, don't let the preacher fall asleep. You keep him awake. Uh -huh. I finally stopped at the Tennessee border and got out and gave my ears a break. That boy did not shut up <laughs> all the way down there. I got out of time. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> Next day, Brother Bob says, how was your trip? He calls, how was your trip? Good. He said, did Tony keep you? And then he told me what they did. Mm -hmm. She did. Sound like Adam. Lord, this woman you gave us me. I thought y'all was one flesh. Y'all dress alike. Huh? 
But on that trip, but Tony found out a little bit about me. They didn't know. He didn't realize how much I loved my wife, I guess. Because uh-huh. I talked to her all the time. I'll talk to her three, four, five times a day when I'm on a trip. i got to talk to her, see what's going on in the day. I'll tell her she, I love her. She tells me she loves me. Uh, and we talk and everything. Uh, about the third day, he says, you sure do talk to your wife a lot. Uh, I said, I love my wife. Don't you love yours? I noticed the last trip we went on, he talked to her a whole lot more that trip than he did the first trip. I'm talking about giving the love of our heart. Right. But then I thought about this. We need to give him the love of our heritage. Wow. Look what it says in verse 12. Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us see if the vine flourish, whether the tender grape appear and the pomegranates bud forth. Uh, uh, there will I give thee my loves. Uh, I told you she'd been given charge of the, uh, the vineyards of her family, her sisters, but also her own vineyard. Uh, and now she's taken uh, 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 her love to the place uh, 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 where her heritage lies. Uh, all the hopes of her future lies in the car- harvest of those vineyards. Uh, uh, that's her heritage. Uh, uh, listen. Uh, 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 friend uh, uh, some of you are dealing with your past and you won't let it go you got to give it to Jesus uh, hey some of you got children and grandchildren coming up uh, hey and you're worried about this world what's going on and I understand that uh, but you got to give them to Jesus uh, hey when we give him uh, uh, the love of our heritage uh, and let him involved in it friend he'll bless it That's good. I thought about this there's the love of our hands. Look at verse 13. The mandrakes give us smell, and at our gates are all manners of pleasant fruits. Why do, you, why do you think those fruits came? That was fruit from her labor, her work. And can I say, you want God to bless your life and bless your work and bless your testimony, give it to Him. Amen. Too many people are trying to operate outside the unction of the Holy Ghost, and there is no blessing on it. Give him the work of your hands. Let him have it, friends. Hate that bumper sticker says, God's my co-pilot. Uh, well, give him the wheel. You're doing a bad, bad job of it. Uh, let him have it. And he'll bless it. Can I say, we've got to give him the love of our happenings. Our circumstances. Some of you face some storms. And you've heard me say this a million times. They didn't catch God by surprise. And sometimes you're begging God to get you out of the storm. And God designed that storm to get you where he needs you. Don't beg God to get you out of it. Beg God to give you grace through it. Beg God to develop in you what he wants to through the storm. Give him the love of your happenings. And then I thought about this. We need to give him the love of our habits. There are some things that distract us. And we love them. And I'm not talking that they're they're necessarily wicked. They're just things that that we get involved in and we love them. We give so much attention to them. It takes away from the Lord working in our lives. Now I said all that. Say this. The love of your heart's easy to understand. God deserves that sure. for what He's done for us. Can I say the love of the uh, of our our heritage? Some of you are control freaks. You're trying to control your children, your grandchildren, trying to control everything. Your your finances and your four hundred one ks and your insurance. I'm not saying don't have four hundred one ks. I got one, huh? Yeah. And I, I I'm thankful. Hallelujah for Trump. What a blessing. Glory. Amen. <laughs> but I'm not basing my future on that four hundred one k. Uh, some of you are trying to control everything. You just need to let God have it. Give Him the love of that. Some of you, you, you're holding on to things because of circumstances that's come into your life and you're, and, you're, and you're dealing with these things and you're trying to control them. You're trying to work everything out. You're trying to manipulate things. You need to give that thing to God. Let Him work it out. Uh, can I say, as long as you got your hands in it, God won't put his hands in it. Just let him have it. And can I say this? Some of you, your habits, it's causing you victory and joy. 
Well, I've been watching folks this, this weekend. Man, there's been some folks got their cup full and it's running. Chief told me his his saucer his cup got full and run over in the saucer and run over all, all that. I mean, you know, and I've been watching folks. There's been some folks got some help. Some folks got joy. I've seen cup, some come in and you just look like you're carrying away the world, but when you go out, you got a smile and you got t- uh, uh, just that weight's been lifted. I've seen some folks get some help. But I've seen some of you you look the same way that you did when you showed up Friday night. Because you'd been distracted by something that you, you just love it. I don't care what it is. If it's robbing you from God's blessings, you don't need it. Hmm. She said, I give, here, let me go over here with you and I want to give you my loves. You know what help you? You just give him your loves. Just give him your loves. Huh? When the kids started going off to college, I, I learned one, one thing real quick. I couldn't help them when they were hours away. I couldn't watch over them like I do at the house. But I knew one who could. And it was a great day when I learned, Lord, you've got to take care of them because I can't. Hmm? That helped some of you. How about your loves? Are they centered around him? If not, I highly recommend it. Because when you go looking on what he tells her after this, and go read it, when he starts talking about calling her his, his dove and, and all the things he begins to say to her, she's got dove's eyes and, and, and goat's teeth and all them things. What he's, he's describing the most beautiful things that they knew at that time. And he's just, he's just bragging on her. Boy, it's a different when God gets the blessing and bragging on you. Hmm? Uh, will you give me your loves?